In preparation for our first attempt at maneuvering during slow flight, we're going to take a few minutes to discuss the key elements of the maneuver. As with all other maneuvers, maneuvering during slow flight has three main areas that the pilot needs to concentrate on. Heading control, altitude control, and airspeed control. Once you begin the maneuver, you will be expected to maintain a designated heading while slowing the airplane down. Normally, you would select a visual reference point in the distance to help you maintain a heading. Unfortunately, due to the high pitch attitude required for this maneuver, you will be unable to see any visual references directly in front of you. Therefore, you will have to divide your attention between the heading indicator and visual references to maintain assigned headings. You will still want to look outside the airplane as much as possible. You just won't be able to see directly in front of you. With this in mind, it's a good idea to make frequent turns so you can continue to visually clear the area during the maneuver. Besides the unusually high pitch attitude, another noticeable characteristic of maneuvering during slow flight is the sluggish nature of the controls. The airplane will be much less responsive than it is during normal cruise, and it will take longer for control inputs to affect the airplane's flight path. Additionally, because of the slow speed the plane is traveling at, any given bank angle will result in a faster rate of turn than it would if you were turning at cruise speed. Because of these two factors, you will have to lead your rollouts a little more than normal. It is also recommended that you avoid using banks in excess of 30 degrees while turning due to increased stall speeds associated with high load factors. No discussion of maneuvering during slow flight would be complete without mentioning the role of rudder. Due to the high angle of attack and slow airspeed, the left turning tendencies of the plane will be very pronounced. A healthy amount of right rudder will be required to keep the airplane coordinated during the maneuver. Without a sufficient amount of right rudder, the plane will have a tendency to yaw to the left, which could cause you to compensate with an inappropriate application of right aileron to maintain headings. If the plane stalls in this uncoordinated state, it could result in a spin entry. That's why proper rudder usage is essential to performing the maneuver in a safe and effective manner. At the beginning of the maneuver, the power is reduced. During this time, the altitude must be maintained. If you are doing slow flight in the clean configuration, your only concern will be to gradually increase the pitch to maintain your altitude. If you are performing the maneuver in the dirty configuration, you will need to extend flaps at the same time you are slowing the airplane down. Once you reach your target speed, additional power should be added and the airplane retrimmed. If the maneuver is being performed in the clean configuration, less power will be needed than if you are in the dirty configuration. When performing slow flight in the dirty configuration, you need to be careful that you do not inadvertently gain altitude when extending the flaps. Flaps are high lift devices and do exactly as their name implies. They generate a lot of lift. If you aren't careful, you can find yourself 100 feet above your base altitude very quickly. Each time you extend flaps, you will need to anticipate the increase in lift that will occur and correct for it at the same time the flaps are extended. In other words, as the flaps are coming down, forward pressure on the yoke will be necessary. Otherwise, the plane will pitch up and gain altitude. Once established in the proper configuration, altitude control will require a more deliberate approach on the pilot's part than it does in cruise. The plane is flying at a high angle of attack just above its stall speed. You can't just cheat the yoke back a little and gradually regain your altitude like you can when you're in cruise. The first thing you will need to do is add full power. With the additional power added, the pitch can be increased slightly and the plane will be able to safely climb without exceeding the critical angle of attack. Also keep in mind that the plane will climb at a much slower rate than it normally does. Just pulling back on the yoke alone will not increase the rate of climb. Power will have to be added if you want to increase your rate of climb, and even with full power, the rate of climb will only be a fraction of what it is during a VY climb. To execute a climb, add full power and slowly ease the nose up. Unlike a normal climb, the plane will be climbing at the same airspeed it was traveling at in straight and level. Do not increase the pitch too rapidly or the airplane will stall. Use trim to relieve control pressure. To level off at a designated altitude, Lead your level off by 10% of the rate of climb. 
At the same time that you are lowering the pitch, be sure to slowly reduce your power back to the RPM used for level flight and retrim the plane if necessary. To perform a descent, decrease the power approximately 300 RPM and simultaneously lower the nose 1 to 2 degrees. Just like when climbing, the airspeed should be the same as that maintained for straight and level. Use trim to relieve control pressure. Lead the level off by 10% of the rate of descent and once you have reached the target altitude, increase the power back to the RPM setting for level flight and retrim the plane if necessary. Airspeed control is the primary focus of this maneuver and there is very little margin for error when it comes to maintaining the appropriate speed. The end of course standards require that the airplane be flown at an airspeed at which any further increase in angle of attack, increase in load factor, or reduction in power would result in an immediate stall. When flying straight and level, use the initial power setting recommended in the SOPM and then adjust it as needed to achieve the appropriate speed for the airplane's weight and configuration. Once you have established the RPM required for level flight, use that as your baseline power setting for the maneuver. Anytime a turn is initiated, power should be added because the stall speed of the airplane will increase due to the additional load factor imposed upon the airplane. Do not wait until you reach your intended bank to add power. The stall speed of the airplane will increase as soon as you roll in bank. That is why it is important to add power at the same time you begin your turn. Now that we have discussed the key elements associated with the maneuver, let's see how they all come together for maneuvering during slow flight. The first demonstration of slow flight will be in the clean configuration. After performing clearing turns and making a position report, select a heading and altitude that will allow the maneuver to be completed no lower than 1500 feet AGL. When you are ready to begin, reduce the power to 1500 RPM while increasing pitch to maintain altitude. Adjust the trim to relieve control pressure. Allow the plane to slow until the stall horn sounds. At that point, you should be approximately 5 knots above stall speed. Increase power to 1700 RPM to maintain your airspeed and altitude. Trim the airplane for this configuration and make any minor power adjustments necessary to keep the airspeed constant. To turn the airplane, select a heading that you want to turn to. Visually clear the area in the direction of turn and then roll into approximately 10 to 20 degrees of bank. At the same time that you begin your turn, increase power just enough to maintain altitude and airspeed. If turning left, reduce right rudder pressure and the left turning tendencies will help you maintain coordination. If turning right, add additional right rudder to maintain coordination. Start your rollout to the desired heading about 10 to 15 degrees before the point. And once the wings are level, reduce power back to the RPM setting for level flight. To climb the airplane, increase to full power and pitch up to maintain the same airspeed. This will allow you to use the excess thrust to climb. Add additional right rudder to overcome the increased left turning tendency and retrim once established in the climb. To level off from the climb, lead the level off by approximately 10% of the rate of climb. Smoothly reduce power back to 1700 RPM and reduce pitch to maintain airspeed. Retrim the airplane as necessary. To start a descent, reduce the throttle by approximately 200 to 300 RPM and lower the pitch 1 to 2 degrees to maintain airspeed. Retrim as necessary. To level off, lead the target altitude by about 10% of the rate of descent and when leveled off at the desired altitude, increase power back to 1700 RPM. To recover to cruise flight, smoothly increase power to full, gradually pitch forward to maintain altitude, trim the airplane as required, and maintain directional control. Once the airplane is accelerated to normal cruise speed, set cruise power, retrim the airplane, and complete the cruise checklist. Cruise checklist complete. Now we'll perform maneuvering during slow flight in the dirty configuration. Set yourself up the same way as before. Note your heading and altitude, reduce power to 1500 RPM, and adjust your pitch to maintain altitude. Trim as necessary to reduce elevator pressures. This time, as you slow down, you'll be adding flaps. Once below 110 knots, call out Hello 110, flaps 10. and extend the flaps to 10 degrees, adding forward pressure on the elevator to maintain altitude. Once below 85 knots, call out Hello 85, flaps 30. 
and extend the flaps to 30 degrees, again adding forward pressure on the elevator to maintain altitude. When about 5 knots above the minimum airspeed, increase power, this time to approximately 1900 RPM. You should anticipate an indicated airspeed in the 20s to 30s. Maintain that minimum airspeed and hold altitude. Finally, retrim the airplane for this configuration. Performing climbs, turns, and descents will be accomplished in the same manner as maneuvering during slow flight in the clean configuration. To initiate recovery, smoothly increase power to full. Adjust pitch to maintain altitude. Trim the airplane as required and maintain directional control. Next, retract the flaps to 20 degrees. Once your airspeed is at or above 60 knots, retract the flaps to 10 degrees. At or above 65 knots, retract the flaps to 0 degrees. Once the airplane is accelerated to normal cruise speed, set cruise power, retrim the airplane, and complete the cruise checklist. Cruise checklist complete. Now that we've covered how to fly the maneuver, let's look at the end goals for your skills in maneuvering during slow flight. The standards for the end of course check ride include select an entry altitude that will allow the task to be completed no lower than 1500 feet AGL, maintains a minimum airspeed so that any further increase in angle of attack, increase in load factor, or reduction in power would result in an immediate stall. Maintain the specified altitude, plus or minus 100 feet. Specified heading, plus or minus 10 degrees. Airspeed, plus 10, minus 0 knots. And specified angle of bank, plus or minus 10 degrees.